I'm going to cover manually entering monies received into zero. And I'm going to assume that this is monies received into the bank account. There are two types really of monies received. One will be monies received which need to be allocated against a customer for a sales invoice that they have um, paid you for. And the other is money received to which there has not been a sales invoice. Uh, that could be a cash sale. More likely, it's going to be money paid into the bank for some other reason, like a loan from a bank account, money paid in by a director to fund the company, interest received, or possibly loyalty rewards, uh, which are credits given against bank charges, which seem quite common these days. None of those items have a sales invoice created for them and have no other form of documentation. So the first item I'm going to deal with is a receipt from a customer. And receipts from customers really can be split into two types. A receipt from a customer specifically to be paid against one invoice and one invoice only. There's one routine for that. The other routine I will show you is when there is money received to be allocated against either multiple invoices from the same customer or invoices across customers. Example for that would be where uh, checks have been received. They're all being paid in on one paying in slip. So effectively the paying in slip can be regarded as one uh, large amount uh, which is paying multiple invoices for multiple customers. So let's deal with the uh, individual receipt for an individual invoice first. Doesn't matter with whether the amount being paid is the whole amount of the invoice or part of the invoice. So um, I'm going to go to the aged receivables report in the uh, demo company just so I can see uh, what is there. And as you can see, um, we have here basket case um, owes money from February for £914.55. pence. I happen to know that is one invoice. So I'm just going to right click on that and have a look at that particular item. So imagine that you have received £914.55 pence, um, from this customer. If we drill down to the actual invoice it relates to, at the bottom we can enter receipts. You enter the amount paid and I'm going to assume in this case it's the whole amount of £914.55 but if they were only making an on-account payment of £500 you would amend that box to £500. You select the date on which that money is received. You select the bank account to which it has been paid in, in this case the current account, and you provide it with a reference, could be a paying in slip number, any reference you like. I'm just going to use the date on which it was paid in. I'm going to click add payment, and that payment has now been added, £914.55 as you can see there, payment received. That invoice will now not be shown as outstanding. If we go back to my aged receivables, and I go to update, you'll see that has now dropped out of the list. Okay, so the next option then is a receipt against multiple invoices. And the simplest way um, to do that is to look at all your invoices outstanding. So for that, we go to business and invoices and we can see those awaiting payments. Um, we can sort this uh, by any of these columns, but it makes sense to sort it in the two column. And so as you can see here, we've got an amount due from Port and Philip. We've got two invoices that are outstanding. Um, and let's just assume for the moment that they have paid £500. £250 against this invoice and £250 against the next one. So what we do here is we tick both and that adds up to £2,245. Don't worry about that for now. We're going to click deposit and on this screen we are going to change this amount to 250 so now we've got our deposit of 500 we enter the date that we receive that money again we'll put some form of uh, reference very importantly select which bank account it has been paid to so in this case we're saying this has been banked into the business bank account we're going to click deposit and now we've entered a receipt of 500 pounds against more than one invoice we've allocated the correct amounts to each invoice and because this £500 is the amount that's going to show up on the bank statement later, it will be easier uh, to see it on the bank statement. We could have easily selected an invoice from another supply, from another customer as well, um, so that uh, that would have also been included on the total had it been a paying in slip with uh, multiple customers. The final type of transaction, 
as I alluded to earlier, is a transaction which does not relate to a sales invoice raised. And for that, we need to go to the actual bank account. As I've shown you previously, we can go to the dashboard in this case because uh, our default bank account is on the dashboard. What we're going to do now then is enter from this uh, dashboard screen an amount of money received. We click on the three drop three dot dots as a drop down which allows us to receive money and this time we're going to receive money from HMRC. We're going to select count dates. We can put a reference uh, which may be um, corporation tax 2017 and here we can put a more detailed description so refund of corporation tax paid now we're going to put the amount in um, I'm going to assume this is uh, 510 pounds 500 pounds relating to the corporation tax and 10 pounds relating to interest received on that corporation tax so I'm going to split this down and we're receiving 500 pounds for our corporation tax and we're getting interest on CT paid 2017 of 10 pounds that needs to go to interest neither of those items are relevant for VAT there's our 510 pounds click save and we've entered that money received um, into our system worth noting it's now taken us to the account transactions screen and you can see the amount I entered earlier for our uh, sales invoices being paid and you can see the amount that I've entered for HMRC and against both of them is unreconciled. The reason for this is that Zero is telling us that this amount from its point of view has not been proven to be seen on the bank statement yet and we will be covering that in another video. Mm -hmm.